Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, mm -hmm. and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you have welcomed us <clears throat> into your home. We know what a privilege and an honor it is to be there. So thank you. And we would love for you to send us an email with a question or a comment to <clears throat> Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Well, today we're very excited. We have Father Matthew Schneider. He is a priest of the Legionnaires of Christ, and he's also the author of a beautiful book, God Loves the Autistic Mind, a prayer guide for those on the spectrum and those who love <coughs> us. And Father is going to be telling us his story. He's a Catholic priest, and he grew up in Canada. And I'm not going to tell all the story, so I'm not, not going to go there. Um, but you're going to love him. Yes. And um, we're going to have a really sweet show discussing his journey and a beautiful book that he wrote all about praying and how autistic people pray, um, the importance of that, and the effectiveness of, of their prayers. Well, I've really enjoyed reading the book mm -hmm. with you and meeting Father, who himself is autistic. Um, found that out later in life. Um, I don't know many autistic people that I know of. There may be many that I'm interacting with, mm -hmm. but I don't know. And I think the book is wonderful. Um, we're not going to just do the book. It's his life. Yeah. Um, that autistic people need to be people of prayer. He's a priest. He's mm -hmm. autistic himself and is concerned about prayer for autistic people. It's on many different subjects. Um, but it's helped me to understand better a particular friend of mine. I don't meet with him every day, but periodically, who, who's autistic. Mm -hmm. And so there's a whole section in there about, you know, what is autism? And this whole thing of a spectrum. Like, you can't just say, that's what it is for every person who's autistic. Right. You know, if they have their own mind and things that are going on, strong points and difficult points to it. So it's fascinating. Hopefully this will help you to understand better your autistic family members and, and people that we could understand them more fully welcome them more fully into our own families, learn from them the strong points that are there in the midst of autism, and that this will help build up the church, mm. the Catholic church in particular, that we all might be one and love one another as Christ loves us. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back while well, you're at home with Jim and Joy. And today our guest is Father Matthew Schneider. He is a priest of the Legionnaires of Christ, and he's the author of a beautiful book called God Loves the Autistic Mind. It's a prayer guide for those on the spectrum and those who love us. You could visit his website, fathermatthewlc.com. So it's frmatthewlc.com. Com. You did that so well. I tried. I'm glad you said the <laughs> FR. Well, Father, welcome. We're so delighted to have you. Thank you for having me on. Well, we want our family to get to know you, So, and I didn't want to blow all your stuff in the front, in the <laughs> front end of the show. So tell our family a little bit about yourself, and, the, and then we'll get to talking about autism. Okay. Like you said in the intro, I was born in Calgary, Canada. I'm the oldest of four, and uh, I grew up relatively normal Catholic life. I went to Catholic school went to Mass on Sunday, but we weren't like the super Catholic ones who were at Mass every week, every every day or, you know, praying a family rose or anything. And then when I was in high school, I really felt the conversion. And listening to that conversion, it really, really made me take a much more active role in my faith. And then, in, and then I went on to college, local state school, and I really felt the call partway through college listening to John Paul II. And so mm -hmm. from there, I joined the Legionaries of Christ uh, within a few months of that and, uh, and went forward through all our formation relatively normally. Uh, and then after I was ordained, my first assignment was to be a chaplain for a K through 12 school. Not a super unusual job mm -hmm. for a priest, mm -hmm. uh, but at, it was supposed to be three year assignment. But after the first year, it didn't look good. So they're like, hey, why don't we switch you? And uh, you know, there might be something like Asperger's or something like that, whereas, which was, in a, which, 
a few years later, I got diagnosed with uh, autism spectrum disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the psychologist said, yes, well, if you'd showed up a few years beforehand, it would have been Asperger's. We just changed the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the terminology, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you did your whole life undiagnosed. Yeah. And um, did you feel, even in your job placement, did you feel like something was different? What, 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 what do you think a sign was that where they thought maybe this isn't the right fit, what's going on? Well, a lot of it was just not reading the little kids and their and their mm -hmm. social cues and emotional cues, things like that was was what I was told was the main thing. Mm -hmm. And I recognized that I wasn't the best at it. I didn't realize it was so dramatically an issue in that mm -hmm. sense. So that's where I'm like, I, I started to realize that. And looking back at my childhood, I remember a few things. I remember I was very, very clumsy. Like my handwriting was barely legible. I one of my teachers was saying I would trip over other kids and <laughs> things like that. Just, just very clumsy little kid and, uh, and kind of socially inept kid at the same time. So you see that going back in your childhood, at least retrospectively, mm -hmm. I see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to get back to this kind of your own life and indicators and then later getting a diagnosis. But you've written this book. I just love the title of it, God Loves the autistic mind. I mean, yeah. whoever would have thought of that, but I love he loves the autistic yeah. mind. And uh, it's a prayer guide for those on the spectrum. And so what experiences, you know, led you to write this book? Well, for me, the biggest thing was after I was diagnosed, I really went full on into reading about autism. I read probably a whole bookshelf of mm -hmm. autism books. Mm -hmm. And as I'm reading them, I'm noticing there's autism books on this specific issue, that specific issue, this specific part of life, that specific part of life but there's none on prayer and almost none on religion. And there's one or two on religion, but they aren't really, they aren't really that great from a Catholic perspective. And so I said, hopefully somebody writes something like this and waited a few more months and hopefully somebody writes something <laughs> like this. And eventually you, 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 you have that a few times and then you're like, wait a second, maybe God is calling me to write it because mm. like I'm a priest, so I obviously have that. I'm autistic, so I have that part of the, the experience. And you're very bright. And yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm you know, right now I'm, I'm teaching theology at Belmont Abbey College so obviously, as, and I have a doctorate in theology. So obviously I have a reasonably good mm -hmm. intelligence in that mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. yeah, no, and it's kind of <laughs> like, uh, you said it well, it's just like, you know, there you could understand the emotional aspect of it, the physical aspect of it, the social aspect of it, but that's just part of who we are. Yeah. And so what if any kind of diagnosis we have and we're not dealing the spiritual because we're made in the image and likeness of God in that way. And so it was kind of like, uh, Father Tag, you're it, you're the guy. Yeah, right? I, like it was, it was one of those ones where I kind of saw the need for the book mm -hmm. and had somebody else written it already, I would have just, hey, here's this great book. Yeah. But I see, when I see it and I see nobody writing it and I see a need, that's when I, that's when I, yeah. that's what really the origin of, of a book like that. Yeah. Well, this is really incredible because I don't know how many autistic people there are in the world or in America, but it's not insignificant. Well, yeah, I mean, most of the estimates now mm -hmm. are in around the 2% range. Usually they range from about 1 in 45 to 1 in 60, which is one in 50 is exactly 2%, and mm -hmm. depending on which study you read, it's it's around 2%. Right. <laughs> and, the, and then there's the spectrum. Yeah. And tell our family at home, what does this autism and that spectrum mean? Because, you know, people, that, well, she's autistic or he's autistic, and, and it's not one size fits all. So what's the range? So, so to get a diagnosis with autism, you need three aspects. You need uh, at least some check marks in three different aspects. And... And I think, but I think the, and, and those aspects are, you know, the social, the, the sensory, and uh, the, uh, the mental processing th things. But I think a lot of it is to see it from inside in the sense that, like, all of us, when we, when we have our sense experiences, we don't have a conscious reality of the exact sense experience. Like, you know, like I look at Jim's shirt and, and I immediately know white shirt worn by Jim. And I don't mm -hmm. have to think through it. It's like automatically <clears throat> the light bounces off his white shirt and it's in my head as a white shirt, right? Yeah. I don't need to process and kind of make out the shapes. And I have filters in my head to that. But those filters are often different for autistic people. They're often either lacking or they're differently ordered than other people. So we might see certain patterns that other people don't but miss patterns that other people see. Like I'm, I'm 
not really good at faces at all. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like I, right. I'm pretty bad at recognizing faces, but at the same time, I can recognize other kinds of patterns very well, yeah. be, ab well above average in that sense. So it's, it, there are those different aspects of autism that are important to see. And then also it's, it's really a way that our brain is structured ultimately. So it's like that I don't see the social interaction, but I do see, you know, I have, I have good vision. I can read and everything like that. Uh, and I can speak, obviously, but different things are a challenge for me in that regard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you were mentioning earlier the ability or lack of ability to read cues. Yeah. What is, what is that? So, mean? so like when we're talking <clears throat> here and you just nodded your head, right? And you, yeah. like, so you understood what I, what I said. Yeah. And, and most of us, most people, have this kind of subconsciously where like they notice the person's nodding, they don't even consciously process it, and it's just kind of like either they're agreeing or they're saying yes, depending on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Whereas for a lot of us who are autistic, we have to do that consciously. A lot of the people who are autistic and have like an intellectual delay or other kinds of issues ha have so much challenge they can't do it mm -hmm. uh, in that way, and they have much greater issue, issues socializing and things like that. Whereas for myself, I end up having to process a lot consciously that other people are processing subconsciously in social situations. And that can get me by to a certain extent, but it's not nearly as much as most people where, where you're grasping what these kids' emotions are, or what this, what this person, how mm -hmm. this person is responding to what you're saying or things like that. Yeah. Well, thank God you are able to give voice mm -hmm. to this. You know, you speak as you speak with us or in the book, you yeah. speak about understanding what's going on inside and you're observing outside, there's some things that are going yeah. on with autistic people. But the more we can, and I'm just at the baby steps yeah, yeah. of understanding, I'm mm -hmm. excited, because like I said, I have at least one friend I know of, <clears throat> and you're filling in gaps for me. Yeah. You know, why they're doing some of these things outwardly and what's going on. I might, I might interpret something, but it might not fit with what's going on internally. Yeah. Or, or like movements sometimes, right? So there's various movements that some autistic people make. Yeah. My friend makes. So what, what is that about? I'm asking, is he okay or is he in pain? Or is, he, is, is it a way to not pay attention or is he getting something out of the movement? Stimming? Yeah, you stimming, call it? stimming is, that? is that. So stimming is the idea of a repetitive motion. And like I mentioned, part of our issue is kind of sensory experience. And mm -hmm. so one of the things is that all of us want kind of an equilibrium of, in our sensory experience. You don't want like way too much or way too, way too much or way too little, right? Mm -hmm. And so in that, what a, what a lot of times what autistic people end up doing is we'll end up doing some kind of stimming to, uh, to kind of regulate that so that we re remain in equilibrium. A lot of times you have the hand flapping. Mm -hmm. I know for myself it's kind of rocking back and forth a lot mm -hmm. of times like uh, when I was waiting here while, while you were doing the first part, I was in this office chair and I was just going back and forth, back and yeah. forth. That, that is a way to, uh, to kind of regulate those sensory experiences uh, in, in, that, in that regard. Mm -hmm. And do, do you do the rocking moment or the stimming, however a person would do it, do they do it and it brings comfort? It cal it's calming? It's right? Yes, generally, generally it's calming. Some mm -hmm. of them have certain <coughs> stims they might do when they're excited or other right. things. Mm -hmm. But the most common is really to calm and to kind of reach that equilibrium mm -hmm. of, of sensory experience so you can be calm, so you can be focused. Like in the book, one of the things I note about autistic prayer is that we often think of, you know, be still and be, be secure mm -hmm. and things like that as kind of a prayer thing. But for us often, doing that stimming will actually calm our mind more mm -hmm. so we can actually focus and we can actually pray better. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so important what you're saying. Yeah. I and mean, that's so helpful mm -hmm. to understand because like I said with my friend, I don't know how to interpret that or what's going on. And so we might do this in a different kind of way. We do various things. It might not be so visible, but to bring a centeredness and, and a calmness and a pleasure to ourselves lest we get overwhelmed by the experience mm -hmm. that we're about to have. So everybody's doing that. Yeah. We're yeah. just kind of doing it in different ways. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's in different ways. I know for myself, um, I'm I'm perfectly fine with most inside lights, but outside, I'm like the first one to put on my sunglasses yeah. as soon as I step yeah. outside, and and it's like okay, it's like we, we all of us realize, you know, sometimes it's so bright everybody needs to wear the sunglasses, mm -hmm. but other times it's cloudy and I'm the only one wearing my sunglasses, mm -hmm. right? So. Mm -hmm. So there's, there is that experience in that mm -hmm. sense, I think, that, that other people have too, but I think for us it's much more of an issue and it causes, you know, 
where we have to make choices in our life based on it, not just, not just minor inconveniences right. from time to time. Right. And so your, a friend or another priest would say, hey, Father, take off your sunglasses. It's cloudy and gray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I've never been told directly that, but mm -hmm. I, I imagine that it's probably seems a little unusual sometimes mm -hmm. when I'm outside mm -hmm. and it's like I'm wearing sunglasses and 99% of the population isn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's relate some of this, and, and we'll do it on both shows, but there's so much. I mean, your book really focuses in on prayer. Yeah. Um, so what's the difference between those with autism and those who don't have autism uh, in terms of, of prayer? We can't teach them the same way or they have different experiences. You, know, you mentioned be still and know that I'm God. Mm -hmm. I mean, be still. Well, there may be various ways for us to be still, but for an autistic person, the way they're getting still might be through movement. Yeah. So you're saying like, mm -hmm. we're talking about being still. You're doing the... Yeah, you, like, I said, like this be still is a mental stillness ultimately to communicate with God. But there's other aspects. I have a whole chapter in the book on kind of, you know, the, the prayer, what I call the, the prayer bump or the prayer, or the prayer hump in that sense, in the sense that like, for us, when, when you go deeper in prayer, you think of, you know, beyond just saying the Our Father to when you're kind of in a meditative, moving mm -hmm. on to like a more uh, mental prayer in that regard, there is a kind of personal communication with God where you have to understand how God's mind is, right? And that's gonna be more of a challenge because one of the difficulties that comes up with these social situations for us is what's called theory of mind. And theory of mind is basically that, you know, I'm thinking what you're thinking. I, I'm able to interpret what you're thinking from your slight motions and things like that. And those of us on the spectrum often have to str often struggle with that with people we see face to face. Right. So any kind of struggle you're having with people you see face to face are gonna be similar struggles to the struggles you're having with God in that sense, right? Mm. That I am not I am not going to have a an experience, I'm, I'm gonna struggle more in that communication with God in the same way that I struggle with the communication with, other, human, uh, with other, other humans. And so I think in that regard, we do have uh, a gift there and we have to have a challenge there. But at the same time, once we get past a certain point we've gotten that in our prayer life, we can often speed down a little <coughs> bit, I think, to the next part because with that, now we, other people will at that point still have that filter and trying to understand in how they work. Whereas because we don't have that filter, now we can communicate more just heart to heart with God without mm -hmm. that filter mm -hmm. and advance in a way quicker down the path. Uh, wow. If you're thinking of, you know, like a spiritual life, you know, the, mm -hmm. the purgative, uh, you know, yeah. the purgative, illuminative and unitive ways of mm -hmm. the spiritual life. Mm -hmm. so, so when you have your website, and you also have a podcast, right? Well, yeah, I've, I've been interviewed on a whole bunch yeah. of podcasts. Yeah. I, I don't have one that I host. Yeah, I have, but you've done. Some. I've done. I've done a number of podcasts. Right. And what what is the response from people? I mean, are you hearing from uh, non-Catholic autistic people, Catholic autistic people? What is I, their response to it? The biggest the biggest group that's gotten a response is the is the Catholics, and yes. I think in that sense it is it is good that that Catholics are getting it, but I have got a decent response from other Christians in that regard. Uh, even like, for instance, on the back of the book, it's uh, a woman named Summer Kinnard, who's mm -hmm. an Orthodox woman who, mm -hmm. uh, who has written, uh, who wrote a book on uh, theology of disability as kind of like the blurb, you know, the blurb on the back of the right. book. And, and so, and there's all, even a little bit beyond that. I recently recorded a podcast that's, that's not up on the air yet, but with a with a an autistic only podcast where the person who was interviewing me wasn't even Christian, they would consider themselves basically no religion, mm -hmm. but they like to interview interesting people who are mm -hmm. autistic to give a variety of kind of experiences of autism. Mm -hmm. And so I was on that podcast that I think will come out sometime in 2023. Okay. I don't know exactly Perfect. when. Perfect. So, well, and I, I rewatched the <clears> one <throat> where you had on your T-shirt. Oh, okay. And that was really good. And you were just sharing. It was so beautiful. And I thought. Well, you know, if I was an autistic person out there, I would, I would be so drawn to say I could get spiritual insight, emotional help um, from you, and that yeah. would be such a beautiful offering. I was yeah. telling Father that beforehand because I didn't watch the social media mm -hmm. stuff of the podcast. So mm -hmm. you were telling me, and I had mm -hmm. the sense, I thought she was saying, you have your own podcast, you have your own show. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I, went for, yeah. I said, that would be great. I mean, that's really wonderful because mm -hmm. it's really, could, not that you have to do something now. Right. Yeah, because no, you, exactly, you're just being exactly. asked to do it, but I, <laughs> I mean, I can imagine there's thousands yeah. of people that would want to come to you to oh, hear oh, what you got oh, to definitely. say. Oh, definitely. I, I, 
I have usually done it more in writing. Like I've I've often been writing on my on my website in that sense. The last few months I haven't written as much. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, my first semester <coughs> teaching theology is pretty and busy <laughs> and, and it was somewhat busy, and then also doing interviews like this and mm -hmm. another podcast mm -hmm. and things. I just haven't had the time to write articles for my for my blog as much as I had in the past. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's just. I have. I only have a limited amount of time every week. So, like everybody else, <laughs> we're, we're going to take a break at this point. We're going to hold you over for the final segment. Okay. And it's such a blessing to have you with us, Father. So we'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Please don't go away. back while you're at home with Jim and Joy and we're having a wonderful conversation with Father Matthew Schneider and hon I knew you yeah. wanted to ask him a question. I know t tomorrow we'll unpack the book more fully but as I was saying to you during the break I really feel like there must be so many people family members that that love their autistic uh, sons and daughters and are saying ask him this question ask him this question you're not asking <laughs> the question and so what are you hearing from them regarding prayer and how to assist those who are autistic in, in the way of prayer? Yeah, so I think that there's there's a number of different things. I think, first of all, a lot of times because autism, the biggest factor is genetics. So you oftentimes you have a parent who is autistic and whose children are also autistic. Mm -hmm. So there's a few there's a few of those who have talked to me and said you know, how they pray with their with their autistic children. And there's been a number of other ones who who responded back uh, with with how it helped them with their with their children. Mm -hmm. I I remember right now I've been I just Collating basically all the reviews. If you go to my Twitter, autistic priest, the first pinned tweet is basically like 30 or some reviews, and okay. each mm -hmm. one in their own tweet, in that sense, to to kind of explain it. And a lot of them are from parents saying, "Look, this this really helped me understand my my kid. My kid really took to this and really learned to pray deeper or mm -hmm. something like that." And those are the types of responses I mainly be getting in that regard. Uh, they haven't been super, super specific for the most part because some could be very specific and like this specific point help my son in this specific yeah. way. And I haven't gotten as many of those, but I do have a, a bunch. And I think one of the things I tried to do when I, when I wrote the book is I went out and sought out autistic people to explain their own prayer. Mm. So in the book, there, I took about, there was about 25 and I took some of them and they're in the book kind of uh, pseudonymously uh, where it's, where it will have somebody's name and it's just a pseudonym and it's describing their own experience mm -hmm. as part of as part of it because I know my experience but I know that I'm not the only autistic person in the world and my experience isn't going to represent all autistic people and so that's why I have that whole that whole spectrum so that we have that that wide spectrum of experiences to kind of match the wide spectrum of autistic experiences overall. Mm -hmm. mm. How helpful. Father why don't you uh, just lead us in a prayer. Yeah and then close us with a blessing. I know people are being blessed, and I know that further through your prayer and blessing, they'll be greatly encouraged. Okay, well, Lord Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, help us today as we go forth. Help us to learn to pray, to pray more deeply and commune more deeply with you in our hearts. And we ask our blessing upon Jim and Joy and the whole family here watching. We bless you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank Father, you, say Father. the name of your Twitter. Page. So my, my, my Twitter and Facebook yeah. about autism is Autistic Priest. Yeah. If you want my Twitter about Catholic things in general, it's FR Matthew LC. Thank you. Well, what a blessing to have you. Glad we'll have you back tomorrow. The name of the book is God Loves, God Loves the Autistic Mind, a prayer guide for those on the spectrum and those who love us. Father Matthew Schneider. So hope you were blessed by the show today, especially those who might be autistic, those who love them. And uh, I hope this is en encouraging as well for parishes, for dioceses, and that uh, we would understand better these precious souls that we have within the church, welcome them more fully, uh, and learn from them. You're an important part of this family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and with joy. Bye now.